Alright, I'm going to try to do a review of this gun here. There's not really any reviews on this gun so far. Or, you know, there are a couple product demos of the gun done by Wufu, W-U-F-U. I think that's a manufacturer that makes this gun. And uh, this is a RF-2103. It's also called, this one is model is uh, HDQ for high definition quality products. <clears throat> now, like I said, there's no real review. Um, this gun is a good comparison to that gun. And this gun has been reviewed a lot. Uh, a lot of guys use it. They show how good this gun sprays. Beautiful gun. This is the Vivor. Okay. Now, um, you know about this gun. There's no sense really talking about this. It's a, it's a quality gun. It feels really good. And I, I definitely think that this gun feels as good as the Vivor. You know, that to me, the feel of it, very smooth, very, very nice. These Both of these guns are way above those cheapest uh, guns you're going to find. The cheapest guns Harbor Freight carries. And even that gun that's very popular, the... The R500, it's an LVLP gun. It's also called now, I think, the A610. Well, this thing is the RF2103. I do not like the R500. The, the feel of it and the balance of it, I just don't really care for that gun. And to me, the quality is a little bit closer to those really cheap, junky guns, whereas these two feel much, much better. So... Let me just um, take one more look at the, the, the guns, the differences here. This is surprising. This needle, nothing wrong with it. It's a very good needle. But it's the kind that has like the barrel midway. And the trigger pretty much, the pivot here I think pushes this trigger back. Pulls this needle back on the Vivor. On this gun, I'm very impressed because... It has a very small barrel way at the end of the needle. And I looked at it, and it turns out there is a sleeve inside there that when you pull the trigger, the sleeve comes. The sleeve goes all the way from the trigger to the back of the gun, and it presses, pulls the needle back. So to me, that's pretty cool. There's a very nice needle. The caps, I think, are very similar. Oh, they both have two holes besides the center hole. They both have two air holes on the air horn. I think the Vivors look smaller. Yeah, the Vivors are smaller on the air horn. This guy's got some a big hole at the 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 outside one is really big. The in, the the one closer to the gun is a little smaller, and it has the two guns besides the center hole. So the caps are kind of similar in design. The insides are. This one has like a metal ring that's like a wire that's bent like a hex uh, that goes around and holds the two pieces in there. This gun doesn't have that. They both have a, a, a nylon uh, o-ring around there, seal. They both have a seal. And I think they both have a... They have a similar... This end is also very similar. They have a bunch of holes on that uh, part that screws in. There is This one has an air baffle behind it. And I think there's a nylon bushing at the end of there. This gun is very similar. It's got a bunch of holes in that piece that screws in. It's got two holes coming out of the gun, but there's no no ba baffle back there. It's it's uh, no extra part. There is a vinyl seal at the end of that part that screws in. So that's all I'm gonna just you know that's to just give you a little idea of the differences. Now, what I've done so far is I test them to see how much air goes through the guns. I open up the fan and the, f uh, the trigger all the way and the, the air valve all the way. And I have my compressor charged up. I pull the trigger. I, I wait. I time how long it takes for the compressor to start up. And it turns out the HDQ or the, the 2103 seems like it uses a little bit more air than the Vivor. Okay, um, you want to know how much? Okay, so I, would, I timed it. It's about seven seconds. This one will start the compressor. 
This one was like seven and three quarter seconds. So it's a little bit slower, maybe 10% in that kind of range. That is maybe, you know, so so now that that covers, I think that this is a little more air consumption, which is it's an interesting thing. I don't have the answer to what that means, but um, I showed you the needle. You know, it's a nice needle, but doesn't mean it's great. But we know this gun is super good based on what people have said. This gun is a question mark. I bought it not knowing, and now I'm going to go to the uh, talk about my experience with it. So I sprayed water with this gun and surprisingly this is the worst gun that I've ever sprayed water with. I've taken even the cheapest gun has had no problem spraying water. Um, and it's funny because you take the cheapest gun you spray water and you think wow this is really good but when you go to spray paint it's a different it's a different pattern it's not the same. This gun, the pattern was terrible with water. It was, if I describe the shape of it, first of all, it was more like a football. It wasn't skinny and tall. It was football shape. And the weird thing with water was, the water was heavy on the bottom half of the spray out. It was like the droplets were, were big droplets. The top half was very fine spray, but you could see that you could see that it was heavy or was biased on the bottom, which to me was that didn't look too great. Now I did um, I did flip the cap upside down to see if it was the machining in the cap that might be wrong, and that didn't affect that it was the same pattern. When I sprayed paint and when I sprayed clear. No problem with that. that. That's not an issue. It's only a weird issue maybe with water. Okay, and here's my spray outs with uh, paint. And um, again, it's, it's, it's definitely the gun so far to me seems like it's got this football shape to it. I think I was holding the gun a little bit close. Not, I don't mean like it was this close, but it was like maybe here, and maybe that's close for this gun. Maybe it should be back a little further. What I noticed was there was like a center area was wet and then there was like a like a perimeter uh, that was kind of very dry. A very distinct difference between the center portion nice and wet and the outer portion very dry. And that kind of reminds me of the way the Harbor Freight Green Gun sprays. So then um, but but on the positive side, I did notice that very, very uniform and flat, spraying really nice, and it looks to me like the atomization is really even ultra fine. So, but that's subjective, and I'm not perfectly sure. And the final thing was I did clear, and it was pretty much the same sort of thing. This is, you could see here where the center was nice and, it dried nice and clear. By the way, these are water-based, clear and water-based color. Um, this sprayed like glass, dried flat, nice. The outer part um, was f drier, so it came out a little more like orange peel. There's orange peel kind of like in between here. But the center part, beautiful, sprayed beautiful. Then I did back the gun up a little bit, and I sprayed it down here. And right here, I don't know if the camera's going to get this, but... I see the clear is here, very nice, all the way up to maybe, this is like the midway, and the bottom I see is really nice. The mid is up here, yeah, this does look like the, no, maybe the middle is here, the top is here and the bottom is here, but because the gun is back further, the wet area is broader and taller. So the further, like I said, there's an area towards the center that's wet, and then there's that dry area around the outside, but when you pull the gun back, the wet area expands. And of course, I think the dry area expands a little bit too, but it's not like the dry area grew that huge. So that i got to do more practice with. But that's a good summary so far of this gun. I'm going to now practice again, and I'm going to try pulling the gun further back and seeing. I 
think the gun sprays really fine and I think it's a good uh, weapon if you're trying to battle orange peel. That's just my hunch at this moment with this gun. Okay, one more thing I left out was that the air cap threads, these are fine threads on the 2103 and they are coarse threads on the Vivor. So the Vivor has a plus as far as that, but these are nice threads. So far there's no problem. I guess if we get a little paint on there it's going to become, a little, could become a little bit of an issue. Alright, so I'm talking about the RF2103 and I'm comparing it to the Vivor, well-known gun, and I'm saying that the quality is just about equal. They're both excellent. They're much better than the cheaper guns that are out there. The spraying is different. The Vivor fans it out a little better than the 2103. It makes a skinnier, taller fan. This guy is more of a fatter, like a football shaped fan. But the question is, don't draw a conclusion on that. The question is, how does a gun that seems to use more air not fan it out as strong as the gun that's using maybe less that's using less air? And I'm just guessing that maybe it, the guns can bias the air towards the fan, or maybe bias it towards the atomization. I'm not sure on that. Um, so I do think that even though this fan might be better than this fan, for some people's opinion, I personally. I'm happy with a football shape fan. I'll do a 50% overlap and stick with that. But I think this may actually be really good with the atomization part of it and with eliminating orange peel. It's just that it's going to take one of those other guys out there that I watch and you watch to maybe get one of these, get their hands on this and do the test and then tell us what it really can do. Um, and I'm thinking of, you know, there's the UPK, I like him. There's Trigger Man, great sprayer. Um, there's the Pete's, I think it's Pete's Hobbies, who the, sprays the, the gas tanks, great spraying, and he does great reviews. He would be great with this gun. Um, UPK could do a demo with, uh, like, the lower pressure compressor, because I think it'll be, it's still, I think it'll still work for a home DIY guy like me. Um, and then there's, of course, Paint Society. He does great great work and great uh, reviews. There's so many good guys out there. I just thought I'd drop a few names. And I wish that they would get their hands on this and give this a shot. Oh, heck, there's one more thing. I, making these videos is not easy. Boy, I'm a real amateur. I don't think I'm going to go anywhere with this. You want to know how much they cost? Well, the Vivor, I paid about 80 bucks, maybe 90 for this gun. I think the price fluctuates. And this gun, $1,200. Just kidding. 50 bucks. 50 bucks, 80, 90 bucks. And way better than those other guns. So, I know you'd want to know. You could just look it up yourself on eBay. Okay. Happy painting.